Today, you're gonna to learn all about color scheme pickers. Before we begin, this video sponsors HelloSign, which offers an API that helps companies grow revenue faster by automating document workflows with a developer-friendly e-signature API that makes it simple and easy to embed, secure, and legally binding documents directly into your website. G2 Crowd says HelloSign's API is two times faster to implement than any other e-sign provider. You or your devs can send your first API call in minutes and your app certification is always free and you won't find an e-signature product with an easier path to implementation. All right, let's get back to it. Gary Simon here, of course, Cetro. So uh, in the past, I've had a lot of people in the YouTube comments and such ask me about how I choose colors um, or are there any color theme, color scheme uh, pickers or generators that I would recommend. So finally, I decided to address this in a new video and we're gonna take a look at six different color scheme generators um, and, and tools that you can use to help you when you're starting a new project, whether that be for a brand new project, UI project, or just coming up with the essentially the colors that are a part of a, a company's visual identity and there's a bunch there's a ton of them but i chose six of them and i'm going to show you exactly you know how do you use these and also which one is my personal favorite all right so today's question is how do you choose color schemes when starting a new project so if there's a tool that you use, you know, it could be the ones, one of the ones I mentioned or not, go ahead and mention it in the comments. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first one that we have up is peloton.com. I think that's how it's pronounced. And this one's been around for a long time. Um, the interface, as you can see, is not exactly the most modern, so it's a little bit older um, that you can tell. But the way this works is you choose a primary color right here, and you can just drag this thing around, and then you have a preview to the right-hand side. Now, you can see we have different swatches over here, um, and you can control these by dragging these in and out. So if you drag them real close in, you can see the contrast is greatly reduced. And then if you bring it, bring it way out, you can see the contrast is increased and it's reflected up here in this palette. All right, and then from there, once you have your primary color chosen, let's say, you know, everybody's using this color these days, it seems like, um, this is a monochromatic version. You'll see that a lot of these color theme pickers are split up into monochromatic versus the second option here is adjacent colors. And the way this works is you could see it's going to use a color theme with adjacent colors in the color wheel here. And of course, you can move these all around and you can see how this color theme over here responds. Um, and then next we have a triad and you could see based on the color wheel we have a an area where it's basically a triangle in this color wheel depending on where you, you slide these things. So it gives you a lot of different fine control and it might be a little bit more like for instance if you if you think you're bad at choosing colors this might be a little bit more difficult because it gives you a ton of control, but in the, all of this control, you might come up with a color scheme that's not exactly the best. Um, so also there's a Tetrad, which is a four color combination here. And freestyle four color over here. All right, so the next one that I have here, and these are in no particular order, is color mind and this one is uh, quite interesting um, basically let's say for instance you have a primary color that you absolutely know you want to use that's a part of your website theme well uh, let's say you may not even have it right away either way um, and you can click keep on clicking generate until you can find something maybe a particular color or maybe two colors that you like a lot um, and then once you do that you click this little lock icon right here so let's say we really like this type of blue so we're gonna click lock and now when we click generate it's going to keep on generating other colors however this one's going to be locked and so you can kind of keep going through this process until you can find a color theme that you think really works well together. Um, so for instance, let's say you also like uh, this as a secondary or primary color. So we lock those two. 
we'll keep going on through these. This perhaps could be um, like a website background that would work well with this color as a foreground. So we'll lock that one as well. And this could be another color that could work on top of this right here. And eventually you'll come up with a full color scheme like this. So of course you can come down here as well and they also have other um, potentially popular, I'm not sure if there's a social element to this, uh, to this particular site, but there's a lot of different other um, color schemes that you can use. And there's also tips about how to use this tool as well. All right, the next one is flatuicolors.com. This one's been around for a while and they, um, I believe at the, the beginning of this year, they came out with a version two, thus Flat UI Colors 2. And this one's kind of interesting. Um, it's not your typical color palette that you would associate, you know, with maybe just four or five different colors. Um, these are split up into countries. And that sounds a little strange, but basically uh, they do have an about section, which will link to a medium.com article that describes what exactly is happening here. But in a nutshell, they've had 13 designers from 13 different countries create these color palettes that you can then use essentially and you just click copy and it'll give you the hex color code for this depending on what you want to use um, so i don't think it's intended for you know a single one of these single 13 color palettes to be used on you know a single project but it's just giving you ideas all right the next up is materialpalette.com so when it comes to UI design, uh, material design, you know, huge design system, very popular from Google. And uh, if you're familiar with material design, then you know um, this is basically uh, they they have there's there a bunch of different colors and then different shades of colors. Um, the way this works is pretty simple. You have to choose at least two colors. So we'll choose a blue and then a light green. And once you do that and you choose these two and they're check marked right here, you can see you have a mobile design based in uh, the typical uh, material design aesthetic where it will show you uh, based on the first one that you chose would be the background and then your accent color is designated right here in the form of a button. Um, so if you want to change the button to different uh, hues, you can do so right here. And then at the end, you could click download to download this and it provides you with SAS, CSS, LESS, SVG, PNG um, options, etc. cetera. Uh, so yeah, definitely interesting here, especially if you're working specifically within a material design project. Um, after that, we have colorlovers.com, all right? So once you get there, you can go to forward slash palettes or just click on browse palettes right here and this is kind of a social take uh, in terms of uh, helping you pick color schemes so it's argumentum ad populum as it's called which is a logical fallacy of sorts it's just because some, if something's popular doesn't mean it's the best but still it'll give you good ideas in terms of what people do like so you can sort these by most loved by default it's just showing you the newest ones generated and anybody can generate these you can create an account and generate them um, but as you can see these are some are very very popular um, uh, the one that says most loved uh, people can love them. So you, this has just about 12,000 loves on them um, and 780 comments just based on a color scheme. So people get really into this stuff. Um, and as you can see, there's a bunch of here, a bunch of these to choose from. So you choose one, for instance, and it will provide you with different information about this particular for instance, the RGB values, the hex values, and all of that. And this one is uh, this particular colorlovers.com forward slash palette tool has been around for several years right now. All right. And then after that, finally, last but not least, and, and, and in my opinion, the best of all these, I like this one a lot, is coolers or colors.co. So that's C O O L, cool. So let's go start the generator. And we could see it's using um, some sort of modern um, JavaScript front end framework or library. Um, I really like this UI uh, because it's very simple and it has 
the color schemes split up into five columns that are just really large on your screen so that you can really get a feel for what these colors look like. So when you hover over them, you'll see several options. First of all, before we get to those options, if you want to randomly generate a new color scheme, you just hit your space bar, making things quite easy. Um, so the first thing you could do is you can choose alternative shades just as a quick way um, to change up the, sh the lightness based on what the current color is here. I'll leave it right here though. And then second, we can drag these around so that we can see how they interact with other adjacent colors that have been chosen. Next after that, we can choose adjust to get even finer control to specify you know, exactly the brightness, saturation, and hue of this given color. And then finally, just as in the other example, we can lock it. So say we really like this, we're gonna lock this, but now we're gonna try to um, get some other ideas. You know, I actually like this one too, right off the bat um, with how they contrast with each other and they're kind of in the same hue uh, and they're monochromatic in that sense. So if I hit the space bar, we'll have some other options. This is uh, an interesting one. You can make your fine adjustments to this if you want to, we can drag this over see how these interact with each other. So let's go ahead and lock that one, all right? And then you can just keep on going on down the line until you come up with some other colors that work well with each other. So for instance, uh, working within this, this same uh, bluish hue here, I might want another one that is, let's just wait till we get to one that's around blue. Actually, I kind of like, this one possibly for like a website background color. We'll lock that one and then we'll go ahead and we'll make some adjustments here. We'll take this into more of a blue hue and then we'll take the brightness up real high and the saturation down kind of low. Uh, maybe something right around here and then I would lock that and maybe drag this over Something, perhaps something like that. Um, but you get, the, you get the point. I mean, this is the process of coming up with color schemes if you're gonna do it on your own. Now, of course, there's a lot more involved with this. So for instance, um, we can click on settings and we can choose isolation mode and that changes this up so that the columns actually have a gutter between them. I personally don't like that because I like to see how the colors interact with each other. And then also we have a monochromatic mode so that when you do try to generate new colors with the space bar, it's gonna stick around the same hue. Um, and then uh, secondary info, uh, it'll provide you just with a, a name of the color or RGB, CMYK, Pantone even, which is helpful if you're dealing with print and all that good stuff. Um, you can also pick colors from an image. So if I choose pick colors from an image and then take a picture of myself here, it's gonna automatically generate a palette and you can click on auto and this um, palette will change up based on the primary random colors that are chosen uh, from here. All right, so very interesting. If you click on collage, it's gonna take these five uh, different colors and, and put them in the familiar background, I believe, or maybe not. Um, and so that's the, the use case for picking colors from an image. Let's say for instance, you have a, a landing page that has you know, um, a photograph of some sort that's a prominent part of the UI and you want all the other UI elements to match it. Well, that's a great way um, to do that, uh, picking colors from an image. Um, also, uh, you can adjust these to show what these particular colors will look like to a person who suffers from these different types of color blindness. Very interesting. So I, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce these. I'm gonna just butcher them. But we choose the first one. You can see how they change from normal to this this one right here. <laughs> uh, Gary, don't even try to pronounce them. Uh, you can see as you, you change these up, I mean, this one, whoever has acro, the acro form of color blindness, pretty much can't see colors. I mean, this, these all look gray to me. You can see how much it changes up. So this could potentially affect your decisions when it comes to your colors. Uh, for, because you definitely want somebody who has this type of form 
Let's click on the other ones to see how much they change. Yeah, it seems like this is most severe. You want to make sure at least they do contrast with each other uh, on some level because uh, if you if you choose a color, let's say for instance, let's uh, let's try to change this up. So if I go to adjust right here, we'll go around here, here, yeah, just like that, and then. I go to this one. We take the saturation right, right around the same area. And then I just change up the hue, for instance. All right, we can see there's a difference between these two, but if you take uh, the color blindness, you can see there's barely a difference. Um, so that may affect your, your decisions going forward. Um, adjust palette, you can change everything all five of the colors um, based on saturation brightness um, temperature let me change this back by to normal so we could see this a little bit better like that so to really take the brightness down if you want or the brightness up and temperature all right finally you can export everything uh, as a url pdf png sas or svg and i'm not even sure what that last option was perhaps somebody can uh, educate me and then what we can also do is explore. So that's the generate tab, but you can actually explore uh, more in a social setting with predefined color palettes, kind of like in the other example. So um, you can click on picks or you can click on best and you can see all of um, these color schemes. Um, I don't want to export this, but we can view this and it'll show you in the whole generate tab um, based on what you want to use. All right, hopefully you found that helpful. Also answer today's question, which is how do you choose color schemes when starting a new project? All right, I'll see you guys later with new videos. Goodbye.